Next discussion will be about the nerve supply and muscle fiber stimulation. Our skeletal muscle fibers do not contract unless they are stimulated by our motor neurons. But first, what is a motor neuron? Motor neurons are spe specialized nerve cells that stimulate muscles to contract. It generates action potentials that travel to a skeletal muscle fibers. At the right picture in the PowerPoint, it is shown the parts of the motor neurons. The dendrites, which collects the signals, the axons, which passes the signals, and the neuromuscular junctions, also the muscle fiber. So the axons of these uh, neurons enter muscles and send, out, and send out branches to several muscle fibers. So a single motor neuron and all the skeletal muscle fibers it innervates constitute a motor unit. So this motor unit unit uh, the fewer fibers there are in the motor units of a muscle the greater control you have over that muscle. Like for example, let's uh, different. I let's compare our hands and our the muscle of our hands and the muscle of our thigh. So the muscle of our hands may have only one or a few muscle fibers per unit. That is why we can easily we can easily control it. We can easily control over it. While our thigh, comparing it to our thigh, who has a many as 1,000 muscle fibers per unit, uh, we, some people cannot control that as easily as others can. So, um, many motor units constitute a single muscle. So, let's go with the neuromuscular junction. Each branch of the motor neurons forms a junction with a muscle fiber called a neuromuscular junction. It is located near the center of our muscle fiber. As shown in the picture, these are the parts of the parts of the neuromuscular junction. The axon branch, the neuromuscular junction itself, the presynaptic terminal and uh, also uh, the neuromuscular junction under the under the microscope a neuromuscular junction is formed by a cluster of enlarged axon terminals resting in indentations of the muscle fiber cell membrane as you can see at the picture the neuromuscular junction was resting on the muscle fibers cell membrane so an enlarged axon terminal is the presynaptic terminal it was on the as shown in the right picture so that is the presynaptic terminal while the muscle fiber membrane is the postsynaptic membrane the space between the presynaptic terminal and the muscle fiber membrane or the postsynaptic membrane is what we call as the synaptic cleft so on the on each presynaptic terminal or at the end of the neuromuscular junction there is a Uh, it contains a many small vesicles that what it is what we called as synaptic vesicles so these synaptic vesicles contain a acetylcholine which functions as a neurotransmitter a molecule released by a presynaptic nerve cell that stimulates or inhibits a postsynaptic cell 
So we will further discuss this on the next slide. So let's go on the muscle fiber, uh, on the process of muscle fiber stimulation. The electrical signal called an action potential travels down in the neuromuscular junction. So this electrical signal, which is the action potential, travels down to the synaptic vesicles. We have defined that synaptic vesicles is a, is a vesicle containing a, dif a different neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Now this acetylcholine will now cross the synapse as shown on the picture of on the PowerPoint. The synapse we will the acetylcholine will now cross the synapse synapse or the physical gap between motor neuron and the skeletal muscle fiber and bind to the acetylcholine receptor. Now, when this acetylcholine receptor, uh, if enough of this acetylcholine neurotransmitter binds to receptors as, this is, as it is shown on the right picture, it will then induce an action potential in the muscle fiber. So, after that, it will also induce the muscle fiber to release a calcium. To release a calcium which is used in muscle construct contractions so once this acetylcholine binds it can't just stay there if it did it keeps the muscle at a const constant contraction so within the synapse or the synaptical cleft there is, an, there is an enzyme called acetyl, acetylcholine esterase, which break down the acetylcholine molecules. So this acetylcholine esterase will break down the acetylcholine molecules. And, this, and that is how the stimulation uh, ends. But however, it, this process will start all over again from the from the generating of the action potential from the motor neuron down again to the synaptical vesicles releasing the acetylcholine uh, neurotransmitter and so that is how the process of the stimulation of our muscle fiber And additional for the acetylcholine esterase, so this enzymatic breakdown ensures that one action potential in the neuron yields only one action, I only one action potential in the skeletal muscle fibers of our motor unit, and only one contraction of each muscle fiber. So that is how it ends the nerve supply and muscle fiber stimulation.